you stay dry. Right now, we are sitting down with our friend Andy Newell, who's here with us to talk about some extreme everything, right, Andy? <laughs> some exactly. extreme uh, cross country. I mean, what's your what's your specialty? My specialty is with um, cross country skiing, and I specialize in the sprint events. So, um, in cross country ski racing, there are marathon events, so up to about 50 kilometers long, and there are middle distance events uh, around 10, 10 or 15 kilometers long and then there are sprint races which is what I do which is in some ways it's the original skier cross it's you're racing six people around the loop um, uphills downhills as fast as you can and the first two people to cross the finish line first move on so yeah in a way cross country skiing is the original extreme sport well you know we have a lot of uh, downhill athletes that come in here mm -hmm. cross country though we don't have a lot of extreme cross country uh, <laughs> uh, skiers that come in how do you get started in that and my next question is you got to be in phenomenal shape to be doing this. Mm -hmm. It definitely takes a lot of aerobic shape, and uh, we're, we hit the gym a lot, and we train tons of hours every day. Just as soon as we're we're done here today, I'm gonna head out on like a two-hour ro roller ski. So it takes a lot of hours of training to get your body in that kind of shape, and it's it's one of those things that you just build on every single year. And I started, I think I started my first race when I was five years old, um, and then each year since then. I uh, went to a ski high school so I could focus on training. So it's just a step up of hours each year until you reach the top level where you can train um, up to 900 hours a year. Is so that right? That's another kind of way, just how you got to be a little bit crazy, I guess, to be a cross country skier to want to put your body through all that training. And, um, and some, some days it's a little punishing. But well, but isn't it, end, well, or is it? Is it safer, uh, would you say, than, uh, than downhill? Mm -hmm. Yep, you're not going to have the. The crashes so much? Well, and, and sprint racing is cool because you're racing so many people at one time. There's tons of crashes. There's people breaking poles and breaking skis, and it's really exciting. So um, anyone out there that hasn't got a chance to watch a, a, a World Cup or Olympic sprint race, they should really take the opportunity to check it out, um, either on the Internet or on TV or anything like that. But it's, it's um, there's no big injuries. not going to blow out a knee, but there's poles flying everywhere. I've had stitches from races getting stabbed with really? poles and broken tons of skis. and. Yeah. Well, I think we got some footage. We're going to take a look at some some uh, footage in just a minute. But uh, the uh, the the training for it. I mean, what do you do in the offseason? Like you said, you're going to do some roller skiing. There's a little snow out there. You may mm -hmm. be able to just uh, pull the skis out. I don't know. It's quite <laughs> enough yet. Yeah. Well, we do a lot of running on the trails. We do a lot of road biking, some mountain biking. Uh, primarily a lot of roller skiing. I'm sure people have maybe seen us rolling around on the roads um, in town. And that really mimics cross country skiing um, really well. So we do a lot of that for training, and uh, just anything we get our get our bodies ready for the ta for uh, just what it takes to to push ourselves to the limit on the race course. But um, just people don't necessarily get to see the the action that that takes that that goes into um, like the just the head to head ski racing action. And that's why when I was in high school at Stratton Mountain Ski School, I put together these ski films and me and my buddy started um, carrying camcorders around because one of the things we noticed is that people couldn't, didn't know what World Cup ski racing was like because it was never on TV and we always just wanted to break that mold of what people thought of cross country skiing. They thought it was something that you did like in your grandparents' backyard, you tied some skis on your feet and you scooted around on the flat, but right. that wasn't what it was at all. So that's why we started putting these films together because that media wasn't out there and we wanted to show everyone what cross country ski racing was all about. Now, how about the freestyle side of it? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, I think that goes, that stems from going to Stratton Mountain School, um, which is one of the best uh, ski and snowboard schools in the country. And so you so, go to school to learn this stuff? <laughs> no, I was, I was at school uh, training for cross country skiing, but a lot of my friends, and, and it's still today, most of my friends are alpine skiers and snowboarders. So I think it was just kind of that influence, always trying to break the mold of cross country skiing. Um, We've we've been on the up and up over the years. Um, a, a cross country skier hasn't won an Olympic medal since 1976. Um, so kind of what I've been trying to do my whole life is just try to break that mold um, of what people perceive cross country skiers as as and and just try to do my own thing and and break the mold and hopefully one day win an Olympic medal. Not in half pipe, of course, but <laughs> that's just something that's fun. That's just for fun, <laughs> huh? That's just something fun I do. Uh, to uh, keep things interesting, but to win a medal in cross country skiing and and show the world that it is such an exciting sport. Now let me ask you: you're you're from Vermont, uh, mm -hmm. and we don't hold that against you. Uh, a lot of people come here from Vermont, but with cross country skiing, obviously there's a difference between the snow in the east and the snow that we have here. Mm -hmm. With cross country, 
do you notice it that much? Does it make that much of a difference? Is 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 that snow better? Uh, I think they're both great. There's Soldier Hollow brings in some really nice snow, and uh, with cross country skiing. It's not always the quantity of snow that makes a great ski day. That it's was a nice fall there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you were supposed to edit that one out yeah. if you're the one yeah, doing the editing there. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's not always the quantity of snow. It's, it's the quality and the dryness of the snow. So Utah does have some great snow for cross country skiing. Nice. Um, just any kind of icy conditions is, is what we like. We like to go fast. We don't always necessarily like the powder days. Right, right. Um, it doesn't make that much difference. Like any racer will probably tell. Nice, uh, nice flip there. <laughs> so it's a, so not, not necessarily that much of a difference, but you're actually not training here in the States that often. You said you're here in, in the winter how often? Like a, a yeah. couple weeks? I'll be, in, I'll be in the U.S. about 10 days this winter. That's it. And I leave in a week to go to Europe. So And you're in, you said, all over Central Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, primarily our races. Cross country skiing is such a huge sport over there. So. That's why we don't generally have any World Cups in the U.S. All the World Cups are focused in Central Europe and in Scandinavia. Um, we'll go over there to a race, and there'll be 70,000 people will show up. Wow. It's like a whole different world. It's like, and, I'd be uh, over there, too. <laughs> yeah. You're a rock star. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so weird. I mean, to, for, to have such an underground sport in the U.S., and you go over there, and people recognize you on the streets, and you have, you're on TV every single weekend, and there's 80,000, 70,000 people show up at these races, and they, they pack it in around the sprint courses. It's really cool, and it makes... Yeah. It's really exciting event, so Very that's cool. what keeps me stoked. And your films that you're doing, uh, you do. You say they're kind of underground, but if people want to see some of the, the work that you've done, is there any place they mm -hmm. can go? You have a website or anything? Yeah, they can go to xkifilms.com. That's our website, or andrewnewell.com. And uh, we've put out two films so far. Um, it's been a while since, since our last, so now my goal is to put one out by this season. We're hoping by mid-December, in time for uh, the Christmas season, we're going to get our new DVD out. and. Um, so the name of the DVD is called The Day in the Life, and what it's going to focus on is, again, since, since there's so many cross ski fans in the U.S. and they don't have a way to check out World Cup racing, they don't have necessarily a great way to follow their favorite World Cup skiers, we're going to try to bring that to the U.S. and uh, show people what that's like. So this new film, it'll have a little bit of the freestyle stuff in there, just because that's what X-Ski Films is all about, and that's what I'm all about. But the main focus is going to be on the World Cup racing. It'll have tons of footage from European TV on there, and it'll have tons of interviews with some of the best skiers in the world. Excellent. And again, your website is andrewnewell.com? andrewnewell.com, yeah. And it's N-E-W-E-L-L. -L. People can find out more about you and where you're going to be and all that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, we want to have you back here again. <laughs> all right. We appreciate you coming by and wish you the best. Stay safe, okay? Great. Thanks for having me. All right. Stick around on the Mountain Morning Show. We've got much more coming up. Zermatt Spa is going to be here, plus a whole lot more right after this.